our introduction to fluid mechanics lab session for engineering 3404. Today we're going to show and discuss the theory of the first lab and we also show the demonstration of the lab step by step. Our first lab is the measurement of fluid properties. The learning objective for this lab is we'll measure three interrelated physical properties of fluid. Those three interrelated properties are the density, the specific gravity, and viscosity. The, through this test, we'll learn how to determine the density of various liquids by measuring the relative density using a universal hydrometer. Next, we'll learn how to measure the density of a small solid using a pectinometer. And finally, we'll learn how to measure the viscosity of various liquids at atmospheric temperature and pressure using a falling sphere viscometer. Before we start and show you the derivation and the demonstration of me doing the test, let's review some of the scientific term that we need we're going to use for this test we need to know density a specific weight a specific gravity a specific gravity is the ratio of the density of substance to the density of water at four degrees celsius why we are using four degrees celsius because Water has the maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius, which is 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. And that's why we take it 4 degrees Celsius. The other terms we also need to know viscosity, which is the resistance to flow. Buoyancy force, we you know um, it is the upward force exerted by a fluid, which is opposed to the weight of a partially or fully immersed object a body going down through the liquid is also face a drag force in fluid dynamics drag force is acting opposite to the relative motion of any object moving respect to the surrounding fluids we also need to know the concept of inertia which is is the resistance of any physical object to any change in its velocity. The other term we also will be using is terminal velocity. We'll show you when we use the viscometer. When we drop a spherical ball through the viscometer, it we assume that it as it attains a maximum speed of that falling ball through the viscometer, and we call that maximum speed as a terminal velocity. For this test, we also need to uh, remind ourselves about the Archimedes principle, that principle we're going to use to measure the buoyance force, and also we're going to um, use the Stokes law to measure the drag force. The Archimedes principle says any body completely or partially submerged in a fluid at rest is acted upon by an upward or buoyance force. The magnitude of that force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. The Stokes law says the drag force F on a sphere, a sphere of radius A moving through a fluid of viscosity mu at the speed of V is given by F equals to 6 by A mu V. The Stokes law is not always um, applicable. We have to make some assumptions. So, to use this talk, we have to assume that the flow around the ball, a ball that is going through a fluid, is laminar, and the Reynolds number is less than 1. What it means is that if the Reynolds number is less than 1, the viscous force is more dominant in that situation. Or we can say the inertia plays the very small role in that situation. So once we assume the Archimedes principle and Stokes law, now we can look at the particle and solve for our freeway diagram and all the force acting. 
again to start our derivation to find the viscosity we have to make two assumptions first as, as we said in the previous slide for flow around the ball is laminar and the Reynolds number is less than one the second assumption is that the terminal velocity as I said um, if you think if you see the pointer the hydrometer if you drop the ball from here it's uh, falling through the viscometer and um, we assume that this ball attains a fixed maximum velocity constant which is the terminal velocity and our assumption is that terminal velocity is sufficiently slow and the body does not experience any acceleration and the net force is zero so we're assuming though the ball is falling through the fluid due to gravitational acceleration but we will assuming we'll assume that there is the acceleration is zero once the acceleration is zero the net force is zero and this assumption will lead us to solve with this equation so again if we see a particle the ball is falling through a liquid at velocity v gravitational acceleration is acting z sigma here is the um, density of that solid in this case stainless steel and um, the weight is acting downward the buoyancy force that we said according to the archimedes principle it is acting upward and then the drag force is also upward since we assume the net force is zero no acceleration so we can say the downward force from the free body diagram positive and buoyant force and the drag force negative upward and the net force is zero if we plug the value weight equals to m z right mass into gravitational acceleration so that's this z and density into volume is the mass so 4 by 3 pi r cube is the volume of the sphere that's why rho s is the density of the solid that we're going to measure in this lab the buoyancy force according to Archimedes principle is again rho z and the, um, this rho is the density of the fluid not the solid this is rho s and this is just rho and um and the drag force is as we know six pi uh mu vr we have to also find the mu and if we rearrange this equation we can find the viscosity equation and this part of the equation viscosity equals to 2 over 9 r squared z mu s minus mu uh, rho s minus rho over v this equation we're going to use to find the viscosity on the third stage of our data collection we're going to collect data at three stages and for each stage we will collect we will derive some results from those data so let's see what are the equipments we're going to use for this test. First, we will go over the equipment required for this experiment. Here we have our universal hydrometer. We have two hydrometer jars. So these are the hydrometer jars. One is for glycerin, one is for castor oil we'll use another one for water and those these two we'll be using to measure uh, the specific gravity using this hydrometer we also have for our test our water castor oil and glycerin that we'll be using we have here our Gay Lussac technometer. We have two falling sphere viscometers. So these are the falling sphere viscometers because we will be using spheres to fall down through these viscometers. And we will be using different size spheres. These spheres we will be using through these uh, viscometers and finally we have 
thermometers here if you can see to measure the temperature of water glycerin and castor oil and we also need a stopwatch I forget to mention we also need a weight scale to measure weights as we say we have three stages of data collection first one is the density of common liquid where we're going to use the hydrometer to find the density of water glycerin and castor oil so let's see how to measure the values before we start the test first we have to see if the bubble here is at the middle of the black circle here if it's not then we have to adjust this so once our instrument is labeled with the ground we took a hydrometer jar and filled it with water now we're gonna do is that take the hydrometer and put it inside the jar I'm slowly putting it down and I let it go it's floating and it will stabilize we have to see the value here if you see if you can see there is a one here it has to be labeled at the water surface so if you see the one is exactly on the water surface that means our hydrometer is accurate we, we also need to measure the temperature of the water so I'm using the temperature thermometer to measure the temperature and if I see keeping my eye parallel to the thermometer not from above not from below parallel I see the temperature reading is 23.5 degree I'm going to pour glycerin into the jar I have to fill the jar up to a point so that the hydrometer can float similarly I have also poured the castor oil into the second jar now I'm going to put the hydrometer into those jar to measure the specific gravity slowly I put it in and for this one I'm using a second hydrometer that was also checked and I let it go you see the hydrometers they went different depth due to the thickness of the liquid that we used now what we're gonna do is to take reading from the water surface or the liquid surface you may notice is that for the liquid in a glass may have a concave at the edge this is called meniscus when you have meniscus you have to take reading at the bottom of the meniscus so don't now if we would like to take the reading I see for the glycerin 1.2 mark is above the liquid surface and if I see parallel at the bottom of the meniscus I'll get the reading 1.27 if I do the same thing for castor oil I see 1.0 is under the liquid and then the mark is 0.9 above so if I see again um, at the minis bottom of meniscus I take the reading as 0.96 what you should do is that you take um, three different measurement and take an average also do not forget to take temperature measurement once we found the specific gravity from the hydrometer we can just multiply with the density of the water at 40 Celsius which is 1000 kilogram per meter cube to find the 
density of castor oil and glycerin. On the next stage, we have to find the density of the solid, which is in this case different diameter uh, stainless steel sphere. We have to collect this data. Let's see how to collect this data. So we have finished our first stage of data collection. Now we're going to do our second stage of data collection. Now we're going to take the dry weight of our technometer. We're going to place this technometer inside this chamber so that the wind doesn't affect the mass. So I put it inside and let it go. And I do calibration before I do the measurement. So it's giving me 33.3 gram. Now I have filled the pechnometer with water. And now I'm going to close the lid. So additional water should come out. And I'm going to remove any spilled water. You should be careful if there is any bubble inside the pechnometer. You should let the bubble go out before you put the stopper. So I, I took another measurement with the water. It's giving me 82.7 gram. Now I'm going to take the measurement of the weight of the balls. I have taken one by six inch steel balls as you can see and I'm going to use this pot to measure eight of the stainless steel ball. So what I'm going to do is then place the empty pot and measure its 1.27. Now I'm going to add the eight balls inside. So I have put eight ball inside and closing the lid and it's giving me um, the gram is 1.4 gram. Now what I'm going to do is that take carefully the stopper of the pycnometer and put all those steel balls that I had into the pycnometer. Okay, all of my steel balls are inside the pechnometer and I'm gonna close the lid and we get the reading of 82.84. So pechnometer with water and with the steel balls is 82.84. Once you have collected the data according to the video that we showed, you can use this data to fill up this list to find the mass of liquid, density of liquid, this is just multiplication, um, summation and subtraction. And finally, if you get the ratio of, to find the density of solid, if you find the ratio of mass of dry solid, which is your mass of your ball that you're dropping, and then a volume of L uh, disp, which is the volume of liquid displaced, and you can find it from the data that you just collected from the table easily. From this test, second stage, we will we'll get the value, density of solid, is the final result of this part of the test that we're going to be using on the final test. So in the last test, using the falling ball viscometer, we're going to drop some balls through the viscometer and measure the uh, fluid temperature, fall length, and time. We're going to use different size of balls, and both size of balls will be passing through castile and glycerin. So let's see a video how to do the test. So we have completed our first and second stage of data collection. Now we will start our final, third and final stage of data collection. For that, we're going to use the steel ball that we used. We're going to use two different sets. First, I have taken the 1 by 16th. Um, diameter ball 
and we're gonna pour it to the um, falling sphere viscometer so we're gonna do the same thing for the glycerin viscometer and also the castor oil so let's try with the castor oil so what I have to do is I'm gonna drop the ball from here make sure that your viscometer is filled if you can see the mark 100 175 200 make sure that your viscometer is filled above 200 so what we're gonna do is that put down the uh, steel ball and you will see it's going down slowly drowning slowly you have to use your stopwatch and see when it hits at 200 you have to start the time you can see the ball is still drowning and you have to stop when it hits zero not at the bottom zero line here so let's do it again I have my stop a stopper here um, I'm gonna pour down the stainless steel ball is going down when it's 200 I started my stopwatch and it's starting it's recording the time the ball is still going down if you can see here right and it's gonna go 25 almost there at zero when it's zero I stop and I can measure the time now next what you have to do is that take different size um, spherical balls maybe of 1.8 inch or 3 by 2 inch and use them to see dropping from 200 to 0 maybe 3 times for each of each type of this spher spherical ball do it for castor oil and do it for glycerin measure the time and that will be the third stage of data collection once you collect the data, you have to find a uh, draw prepare a table to compare between the measure versus theoretical viscosities. In the result, you have to put present a table that includes the density, specific gravity of the three fluids, and the um, density of the steel sphere. Also, you have to include the literature value. For the density of the four substances water glycerin castor oil and stainless steel balls you have to present a table of the viscosities measured for the two liquids using two different sphere diameters in that table include theoretical viscosity from standard tables or from literature once you finish the result part you have to add another section which is called discussion in the discussion, you have to comment on the application where changes in density of a liquid is important and where a hydrometer could be used to determine important property of the liquid. Then add some comments and another paragraph is practical on the practicality of using a pechnometer. Then comment on alternative methods of determining the density of irregular shape objects or granular materials and also compare the results that you found with the standards from the literature and finally comment on the accuracy of the result so that was the first uh, review of our first lab next we're gonna discuss about the basic manometry which is our second lab you you should read the provided handouts and the textbook and also we prepare similar demonstration video so that you can come prepared for the labs and you can just come into the lab do the test and uh, submit your re report afterward all those videos will be posted on the youtube channel thank you